There can be little doubt that the early Renaissance in Italy stands as one of the most beloved and studied periods of art history. The emergence of humanistic art and culture from the ashes of medieval feudalism has fascinated generations of art lovers. In this program, you'll trace the origins of the Renaissance through the lovely and compelling artworks of 14th and 15th century Italy housed in the Hermitage Museum. It was the age of the powerful Medici family, the golden age of Florence, and the innovative painting of artists like Fra Angelico, Simone Martini, and Fra Filippo Lippi. Artists reawakened the beauty of the human figure and the nobility of the individual. Religion turned from strict doctrines to a search for God in the beauty of natural things. A search led not by the church, but by the personal intuition of the individual. When this portrait was painted in the 16th century, the discovery of linear perspective had revolutionized painting. Artists readily created the illusion of three-dimensional forms on the flat canvas. Concern for the world to come was replaced with an appreciation for the here and now. Palma Vecchio's dignified portrait of a man from the early 16th century reflects the new world view. Man was once again free to discover the world around him rather than relying on explanations of religion. Man, rather than God, was once again the measure of all things. La Bella Maniera, or the beautiful style, took hold as the 16th century developed. This intriguing woman, probably a widow, holds a potion believed to be an antidote to grief. An inscription on the vessel is a quote from Homer's Odyssey. It says the potion relieves pain, removes anger, and results in oblivion. Artists endowed their subjects with a poetic authenticity that sought to capture the beauty of the individual human spirit. Notice the sense of immediacy in his animated intelligence idealized yet individual at the same time. Baldessari Castiglione described the ideal Renaissance woman in his book, The Courtier. She should be knowledgeable about literature and painting and know how to dance and play games with a discreet modesty. In Domenico Capriolo's Portrait of a Gentleman, we see the image of the ideal Renaissance man. Worldly and knowledgeable, he holds a book and surrounds himself with the visual reminders of a heroic classical past. Notice in this group portrait how each person is painted as a unique individual, yet at the same time shown at their best. High social status is not stressed. The portrait likely represents the members of a family. The Annunciation was a favorite religious topic of Renaissance artists. In a work that dates just before the 16th century, Cima de Conigliano captures the moment when the Virgin becomes impregnated with the Holy Spirit. Realistic-looking figures exist in a setting of three-dimensional depth. The angel, who looks almost human, has flown silently through the open window to tell her that she will bear the Son of God. The word icon means likeness in Greek. In early Christian times, icons were small and hinged so they could be carried by nomadic monks on their journeys. But this Byzantine icon is larger and dates from a later age, the 13th century. 
It is labeled proto-Renaissance because the idea of three-dimensional modeling is beginning to take hold in this otherwise almost medieval work. In the terrifying period when the Black Death or bubonic plague ravaged Italy, the religious orders headed by St. Francis on the left and St. Dominic on the right were especially powerful. People flocked to the churches and prayed before altars like this one. The Madonna is depicted as Queen of Heaven with angels fluttering above. Eventually, the plague would kill more than half the population of Europe. In the 14th century, the origin of the deadly plague was unknown. The church said the plague was divine retribution for man's sins. Franciscan monks gave gentle spiritual comfort, preparing the dying for eternal salvation, while the Dominican order preached against heresy. For their fierce but loyal guarding of the faith, they were called dogs of the Lord. Renaissance art grew out of an atmosphere of the Byzantine and medieval ages. The studio of Ugolino di Tedice created this work about 1270. It is the earliest work in this program, dating from the time of the great poet Dante. The Russian poet Valery Brusov wrote about this painting in his book called Little Lamps, published in the early 20th century. He represented each period of art history with a certain color of light, the age of Dante with gold, and the age of the high Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci with azure blue. He wrote, Centuries, little lamps, how you are stretched in the darkness through our brains, along the solid thread of time, diverse flames, you beguile the eye, Lamps are burning, some brightly, some dimly. The age of Dante is a mysterious glimmer, ominously gold. O oh, Leonardo, your azure radiance. By the late 14th century, earthly images began to appear more and more often in spiritual painting. The figure is St. Pontian, a pope. Images of earthly men who achieved sainthood often appeared in multi-paneled altarpieces which usually depicted scenes from the life of Christ or the Madonna and Child. This one comes from the workshop of Spinello Aretino, who worked in Florence, Pisa, and Siena. St. Pontian holds his sword ready to fight for the faith. It took many craftsmen to make an altarpiece. Some cut the wooden panels, some applied gesso. The image had to be sketched on the dry gesso, and gold leaf was applied, all before the actual painting even began. Also from the Aretino workshop is Saint Benedict, the founder of the Order of Benedictine Monks. He stands with his Book of the Holy Rule, a plan for a school to the Lord's service. Lorenzo de Niccolo Guerini painted in Florence at the beginning of the 15th century. His decorative painting, laced with Gothic arched frames, reflects the taste of the growing class of wealthy merchants in Florence. They sought luxury and social stature, With a new international awareness, the artist has imitated the popular French Gothic arch of his day and used it as a decorative motif to arrange the figures. The angels have been moved to the frame to allow the main figures to fill the space in the central panel. The gem-like colors are set off by rich gold leaf. The Madonna and child are quite human and natural. They share an interplay of emotion, much like a real mother and child, rather than icons.
Inventive and colorful winged figures surround the work. This is St. Catherine with her wheel. The mature, crucified Christ. And St. Barbara. The Virgin and Gabriel by an unknown artist is a much earlier work of Greek Orthodox origin. The Virgin is seated in an Old Testament setting, a representation of the Holy Land. She recoils with surprise and modesty when she learns that she will bear the Son of God. The angel Gabriel appears in the form of a dove traveling on a beam of light. Hail Mary, peace be with you, the angel said. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. The 14th century painter Simone Martini was famous for his lyrical flowing lines and psychological intensity. His Madonna seated on the ground is also called the Madonna of humility. She was an intercessor in heaven for the souls of humanity. As such, she was worshipped in a phenomenon known as the Cult of the Virgin. Simone's flowing lines, even in this sadly damaged work, are a tribute to her beauty. Simone counted among his friends the Renaissance poet and humanist Petrarch. He wrote, That land is blessed, the dale is bright, where I was a captive of beautiful eyes. The Virgin is treated as a subject of courtly love. Even monks wrote poetry lauding her beauty just as knights wrote in praise of their ladies who were their lord's wives. Mary's youth and beauty were equated with spiritual love. Even the saints were sometimes seen as knights of valor in her service. This series is by Gentile da Fabriano, the early 15th century Florentine artist. Florence was then the intellectual and artistic capital of the continent, ruled by the Medici, bankers to all of Europe. To atone for their sin of usury, they became lavish patrons of the arts, to the service of God. To this end, the subject had to be religious, but the style simply reflects the tastes of the times. Here, de Fabriano depicts St. Louis of France. Notice the fleur-de-lis on his robes, a symbol of French royalty. Florentines were fascinated with French, Gothic architecture and Louis. As Louis IX, King of France, he ordered construction of the ornate and colorful Saint-Chapelle in Paris. Likewise, da Fabriano's many figured altarpieces were also prized for their richness of color and decorative motifs. Saints in painted gold arches engage themselves in scholarly activities or hold the instruments of their martyrdom. <laughs> 